Two case studies that can help you learn skills faster. Case study number one, learn by trial and error. Jamie Pete Canix was a basic Excel user when she started her first job out of college. As a recruiter for JP Morgan, data analysis wasn't one of the required skills. However, a few months in, she was asked to build an Excel model that would track and report the success rates of campus recruiting efforts. I was totally out of my element, she admits. Excel is not a core part of a recruiter's job. I was focused on hiring people, that's what I was being measured on. But she had an interest in analysis, that's why she chose to do recruiting at an investment bank, and wanted to prove herself as a newcomer. She started by learning as much as possible on her own. She found tutorials on Google, and watched instructional videos on YouTube. But she still struggled. When I got stuck, I would ask bankers. They build models every day so I was able to leverage my connections and find people who had the right skills, she says. Over the course of two weeks, Jamie developed the model. I didn't get it perfect the first time. There were mistakes in the formulas and people found errors, she says. But she continued to refine it, and because of her success, others asked her to take on similar projects. Once people knew that I could pull data together quickly, and make sense of it, I started to get a lot of requests. She admits this trial and error approach wasn't the most effective way to learn Excel but given the immediacy of the need, it was necessary. By the time she left the job almost three years later, Excel and data analytics were strengths that helped her land her next position. Case study number two, experiment with different approaches. Safiya Syed, a regional finance controller at a global outsourcing company, noticed that any time she suggested an improvement to a financial or IT system, colleagues resisted. Her ideas went through numerous rounds of review and were heavily questioned. She decided that her communication style was hindering her, and needed to be changed. I was given feedback a few times that I was too opinionated, she says. Sophia started by reading books about how to persuade people effectively and joined Toastmasters, a nonprofit educational organization. Through that program, she learned how to connect with stakeholders and present ideas in a more appealing way. Also, coincidentally during the same time, the president of Sophia's company started interviewing key employees to better understand what they did or did not like about their jobs. This provided Sophia with a perfect opportunity. She explained her desire to see her ideas have more impact and the boss advised her, to focus less on why something needed to be changed and more on how it could happen, including what she could do to make sure it did. Sophia realized she had been assuming that her colleagues understood what the problems were and how to fix them. She had been highlighting what needed to be done, and leaving it at that. With her new understanding in hand, she was able to try a different approach, she mapped out a process and pointed to the root causes. This helped her audience understand where they could make changes and how exactly she could help. Sophia has noticed a big difference in how colleagues respond to her suggestions, they are now more open to hearing them, and willing to work with her to implement them. For more content subscribe.